Hi, in this video, we're going to create a new Maven project for our microservice. This will allow us to consistently build our application on different machines. The Maven project will also help us later when we add our code to continuous integration process. We're going to start with no code and get a simple microservice running on Wildfly Swarm. This tutorial will be just on the application side. And what that means is we're not con connecting the continuous integration parts just yet. This is the second video in a larger playlist for creating microservices in Java. You can find the link for the full playlist in the text below. Here's our plan for this video. We'll create the Java project using the Maven Quick Start archetype. We'll make some changes to the Maven POM file to incorporate Wildfly Swarm, and then we'll compile and test just to make sure everything is set up correctly. Our Java microservice won't do anything yet, but this will make it easy for us to package our application as we add functionality. Let's start creating our new Maven project. We're at a blank slate, so we'll create a project using a basic Java jar archetype in Maven. At a command prompt, here's what we'll enter. This will create a basic Java jar project. If you're not familiar with Maven, you might want to check out the Maven tutorials on dju.com. We'll accept the defaults for the version for now. When it's done, there's nothing added in our POM file other than JUnit. Now that we've created a new Maven project, we need to set up our project to use Wildfly Swarm. Wildfly Swarm has everything we need to create a Java application in a single jar. Swarm also provides other useful tools for implementing microservices in Java. Wildfly Swarm does provide a wizard to create projects depending on our requirements, but we're going to manually add their dependencies to the POM file. We're doing it manually, so only so that we better understand all the moving parts. But if you use Swarm for other projects, feel free to use a generator. It's pretty cool. First, we need to change the Maven packaging to war. The reason is, technically, we're building a RESTful web application that responds to HTTP requests using JAXRS. What will happen if we forget to change this is it won't trigger JAXRS to look for our REST application. When we try to access endpoints, nothing will happen. Next, we'll create a property section in our POM file and add our first property, the Wildfly Swarm version. At the making of this video, the current version is 1.0.0.final. We need to make sure Maven is using Java 8 for everything, so we'll set the property for that. The fail on missing web XML property is because Maven complains when you don't add a web XML file. That's there to tell Maven we don't need the web XML file. We'll also add a property for the source encoding. For almost everyone, it's UTF-8, but adding this gets rid of the Maven warning. Next, we need to add a dependency for Wildfly Swarm using these Maven coordinates. This tells Maven to include Swarm libraries for our microservice. The version is set from the property we defined up in the Properties section. In order to package our microservice into one Uber jar, we need to tell Maven how to build our application. We get that functionality by adding the Wildfly Swarm plugin. Again, we pull the version from the properties. This is what our POM file looks like so far. Let's build it to make sure everything's right. The command is maven clean install. Now it might take a while for the first time compiling. Maven is downloading everything we need to implement the microservice. If everything is set up right, we should see build success in the info logs in Maven. All right, that's all there is to creating a new Maven project in Java. This setup allows us to build the code on any machine. It also imports easily into NetBeans. So thanks for watching the video. You can find the code on GitHub and a complete transcripts on dgu.com. Next, we'll take a look at the design of our Trivia microservice. If you like what you're seeing or have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.